So today our first topic is absolute maxima and absolute minima for function. Okay. Uh, let's see definition. What is absolute maximum and what is absolute minimum? And as for maxima, maxima is just plural of maximum. And value of function f c it's absolute maximum if f s greater or equal f x for all x from the domain for all x from the domain uh, now next our slide is to recall local maximum and local minimum and we will see difference what is the difference between absolute maximum and absolute and local maximum can you notice this difference okay we will see yes, now local think, maximum and yeah, i, I hope we will notice this different. difference okay so absolute maximum it's fs fc is absolute maximum yeah. oh mari is joining fc is absolute maximum okay Ooh. if fc is greater or equal fx for all x from the domain and similarly absolute minimum is when value of function fs is less or equal fx okay now let's recall let's now recall what is local maximum and what is local minimum in this picture you can see local maximum and local minimum uh, yeah. local maximum we have at the point c sub 3 here yeah. mm -hmm. at this point we have local minimum at this point i will and at this point c6 we have local maximum no can you see can you recognize difference between absolute maximum and absolute minimum what is the difference absolute maximum when value of function is greater is greater or equal to x f x for all x for all x yeah. from the domain but yeah. in case of absolute maximum fc yeah. is greater than fx it's near point c now let's recall how can we recognize when we have local maximum and local minimum necessary condition to have local maximum or local minimum what is this necessary condition its necessary condition is that derivative of this function at this point must be equal zero or does not exist and how related sign of derivative with increasing of function and decreasing when function is increasing derivative of function is positive i hope you remember it i just revisited this topic because today's topic and this topic are very close related uh, as for case when we have 
derivative of function negative, function is decreasing. And graph of function in first case rising and falling when decreasing. For example, very well known function, quadratic function, you know this function. And how can we find using derivative? This function is increasing or decreasing. We can find derivative. It's right here, derivative. Yeah. Then solve inequality, derivative greater than zero. We solved it. And we found out that when derivative is greater than negative three, function is increasing. And when derivative is less than, and when x is less than negative three, derivative of function is negative and function is decreasing. Any questions about it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and uh, the equation is fx equals 2x plus 6. Right? When 2x uh, plus 6 is greater than 0? Uh, I guess your question is how we found derivative of this function. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. So my you question. Know. Yes, I will show it later, okay? Okay, sir. We have formulas for derivatives. Okay, sir. Uh, and you can write down this formula right now. Okay. Write down, write down. X to power n, derivative of x to power n. X to the power of. X to power n, derivative equals n times x to power n minus 1. <laughs> I can't get that. But I will discuss it with you later, okay? Okay, okay, sir. Okay. I didn't get that. Now, we can now decide that f minus 3 is local minimum because from the left side, from the left side, graph is decreasing, graph mm -hmm. is falling, and yeah. from the right side, minus three, graph is increasing. Yeah. Now, critical values. You should remember it very well. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi, good afternoon. Sorry, I was late, I was doing something. Okay, take your notebook and pen. Okay, one minute. So, what is now critical value? It's very important concept. What is critical value? Critical value is value of x, value of x, when derivative of fx equals zero, or does, or does not exist. Let's say again, value x, we called critical value, if derivative of x equals zero, or does not exist. That was the sign you already, all the equation will be that. Go in. What the sign you already? No. Now let's recall what is geometrical interpretation of derivative. Who remember who is geometrical interpretation of derivative? What what it means geometrically derivative? Okay, let's recall derivative 
of function at, po at the point, it's slope of tangent line, slope of tangent line. Uh, what is slope of this line? What do you think? Slope of this tangent line. Sandro, what is slope of this tangent line at the point C2? Zero. It's zero. Why is it zero? Because it's decreasing? No, because this line is horizontal line. Very okay. good question, Raymond. This yeah. line is horizontal line. Okay. And slope of horizontal line it's always zero okay slope of horizontal line okay what can we say about derivative at the point c6 who can say what is derivative at the point c6 at this point derivative i think that uh, derivative at this point doesn't exist absolutely right does not exist does not exist why because slope at this point is vertical line slope is vertical line and slope of vertical line does not exist so raymond yes, note it and remember slope of horizontal line is it's zero, zero. Mm -hmm. And slope, of, and slope line. of vertical line does not exist. Okay. 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 Uh, what can we say about this point? At this point, at this point, what is derivative at the point C1? Uh, as we see uh, at the point C1, as uh, is um, the tangent line is horizontal, so uh, slope of it is zero. Absolutely, look a very good explanation. Here, tangent line is horizontal line. We know slope of horizontal line is zero, so we can say definitely that derivative at this point is zero. And now, pay attention now. At this point, C1, derivative is zero, but here we have not local maximum, nor local minimum. Why? Because from the left side, function is decreasing, and from the right side, also decreasing. And in this case, we have a critical point because derivative is equal to zero. But at this point, we have not maximum nor minimum. OK. Uh, and now last question at this slide. All these points, all these points are critical points because at any point, at any point, we have derivative. We have derivative uh, zero or derivative does not exist. We have just talked about it. How to find FC is a local minimum, local maximum, or does not exist? Look carefully to this tape, and if any questions, you can ask me. Uh, questions. Okay, Raymond. FC is defined, and either F is that the the that low F is derivative, right, or derivative of C. Raymond, uh, say again your question. That let's see, let's see, be a critical value of f. 
That okay. is the here, C is critical value, definitely. Yeah. Because here we have F prime C equals zero or F okay. prime C by prime. Okay. Prime is the okay. noted prime, derivative. Prime. That is what I want to defined. know. Yeah, that is what I want to know. Prime. Yes. I want to know the difference between this F and this F. C, uh, F, C here is critical value. C yeah, is critical value. It's definitely. But yes. now we need to we need to recognize when okay. C is local minimum, when mm -hmm. C is local maximum, mm -hmm. and when C is not minimum, not maximum. Mm -hmm. By the way, maximum and minimum they have common name. It's extreme. Okay. This is once again exam, and in the first picture uh, we have local minimum, and in the second picture we have local maximum, and derivative at this point C it's zero. it's it's zero absolutely, and here is case when derivative is equal to zero, but despite it, we have not local maximum, not local minimum. We have the no extreme. And it's case, it's case when derivative of function does not exist. Derivative of function does not exist. However, it means this is critical point, C, critical value, C. And first picture we have local minimum and in the second one we have local maximum. This is case when derivative does not exist. It's critical point, but it's neither not local maximum, not local minimum. Wow. Wow. Now let's now go back our definition, absolute maxima and minima. And for example, if we have function defined on the closed interval, can you imagine function on the closed interval? Uh, let's recall what is closed interval. We have two types of intervals, closed interval, open interval. What is closed interval, Sandro? When the function has the end or the beginning, it's closed. Closed when domain. When domain is closed interval, and what is what is closed interval? When endpoints of closed interval included? Yes, included. Yes. Do you agree, Luca? Yes. Okay. Very good. Now imagine your function graph of function defined by defined by uh, on the closed interval. What do you think? At which points can appear, can occur absolute maximum? Look, here we have pictures and uh, this function uh, domain of this function is closed interval from 2 to 12. Yes. What is absolute minimum for this function? A equals 2. What is A again, Sandro? 2. No, absolute minimum, not 2, 
but 24. 24 absolute minimum. We have 80.2, but yeah. absolute minimum and absolute maximum. They are value of functions. So in this case, absolute minimum, we have 24, absolute minimum. What is absolute maximum? 154. Yes, absolutely. 154. And in this case, at which point we have absolute minimum and absolute maximum? We have it at the end points. Mm -hmm. We have here absolute uh, local maximum. This is point of local maximum. Do you agree? It's local maximum. It's yes. local minimum. But absolute maximum, we have not at the point of local minimum, but at the end point. Okay. Uh, now look in the second picture. This function is defined on the interval 4, 10. on the interval 4, 10. Here, absolute maximum and the uh, local maximum are the same. Absolutely. Sandra is absolutely right. So here, in this case, absolute maximum occur at the local maximum. Yes also absolute minimum and local minimum yes yes very good very good so what can we say when can appear absolute maximum and absolute minimum they can appear at the point of local extremums or at the end points First example is when we have both at the end points. This when we have both absolute maximum and absolute minimum at the points of local maximum and local minimum. And here we have absolute maximum and absolute minimum. Uh, absolute maximum we have at the point of local maximum and absolute minimum we have at the point of at the point of end point end point here is eight okay uh, but I have a question uh, okay, where is, uh, uh, you said uh, that what was uh, different, be, uh, difference between uh, closed intervals and uh, open intervals in the uh, in this game. Goni, uh, when you mentioned uh, open intervals and closed intervals, uh, what is connection between them and uh, this side? Connection between open interval and? Uh, open closed intervals uh, in their uh, same. Um, uh, Luca, I guess uh, your question is, how can we find absolute maximum and absolute minimum when we have open interval? Uh, no. No. Uh, what is difference uh, these cars when uh, they are open? Uh, is that okay? Um, uh, open or closed intervals? Um, these cars uh, range of uh, range gear. Oh, okay. I will say. Okay, I, I got, I think I got your question, Luca. Your question is, for example, at this example, if we have not 
closed interval, but open interval. What happened? Yes, yes. Oh, very good question. Very good question, Luca. If we have here open interval, it means point two is not included. And the value yes. of function at this point, it's not defined. It's not defined. Mm -hmm. And here we have no ups, we can't have absolute minimum at this point because we don't know what is this absolute minimum. Mm -hmm. In this case, I we guess. don't have absolute minimum. Yes, I guess. Because we because know we don't that, know minimal point. Yes, minimal yes. Point. yes. No, no, we don't have absolute minimum. Uh, we don't have absolute minimum because we can define it. We know when point two, when we have, when X is two, value of function is 24. Mm -hmm. But we don't know when point is 2.001, for example. We can find value of function, but we can't find minimum of this function. Mm -hmm. yes. So in this case, if it's interval is open interval, we don't have, we don't have uh, absolute minimum and absolute maximum. And of course we have local maximum and local minimum. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Okay. Back to back. Yeah, what we, what we see to be a uh, absolute uh, local minima and uh, local interval is it between is it between the curve when the curve is when the curve is increasing to absolute minima that yeah so yeah yeah no no yeah yeah that place is it where we refer to as the local minima? local maximum yeah local maximum Local maximum, here we have local maximum. Okay. okay. But local maximum is not equal with absolute maximum. Absolute yes. maximum is different. It's of right course. here. Of course, I know. Sir. And here, here, yes, sir. absolute maximum yes. and local maximum, they are the same. Okay. Okay. Now, here is now steps. Here is our steps, how to find Here is steps, how to find absolute maximum and absolute minimum when we have closed interval. Read carefully and uh, we will now use it on the exam. So it's very simple, Luca, it's very simple. Look, uh, Luca, look. Yes. Uh, it's very simple. We know that absolute maximum and absolute minimum can appear, can occur at the critical points or at the end points. Yes. When we have closed interval, and now we discuss only in case when we have closed interval. Yes. So, uh, how to find what is absolute minimum? We need just to find critical points and then evaluate function at the critical points and at the end points. Yes. And the largest value will be absolute maximum and smallest value, it will be absolute minimum. Yes. Here is example. Can you try it? Uh, yes, I could. 
uh, find the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum of value on fx x minus. Uh, so first, uh, we could find uh, um, if the uh, which critical uh, values contain the uh, uh, equation. Okay, can you solve it? Can you solve it? I will try now to join by my phone and we will discuss it. Or I have the solution. Ah, oh, no, I have the solution. No need for, to for. try to solve it. What is first step? First step is to find derivative. Yep. Uh, it is a bit. Ah, okay. Fx. It's derivative and critical values. And zero and four, zero and four. What is zero and four? Uh, zero and four. They are critical values. Oh. They are critical values. And also we have endpoints, minus one and seven. And what we need now? We need just to evaluate function at these four points. Excuse me, sir. Okay. For 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 those of us who doesn't uh, for those of us who do not uh, or did not start uh, starts from the math uh, from the previous uh, lectures, can we just can can you just explain to us how the the derivative is the discovered ah. or come to the derivative? I know I know it's uh, integration. I know you have to integrate it to get this, but I think there are many of us who who do not understand where we uh, go, get, go to that stage. Do you get my question? Say again. Okay, I said, can you explain to us how the how we get about the derivative? Ah, derivative, okay. Ah, I will, I will discuss it later. I will discuss it later with you, okay? Okay. Because, sir. yes. Okay, I I, I I will give you formulas for derivatives. I know it, but there are some of us who do, who do not know it. That's why I said maybe you should explain to us. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know you have to you, we have to uh, not integrate integrate to get this, right? So what we have. Okay, good. What we have? Here is a little confusing. Here is written find local maximum and minimum, but uh, we need to find absolute maximum and absolute minimum as well. Yes, sir. So to find absolute maximum and absolute minimum, first we have to find derivative of the um, equation after uh, plugging uh, the yes. minimum and uh, yes. maximum points. Yes, and the largest value is 49. Largest value 49. It's absolute maximum. Yeah, because it's the largest. Yes. And in this case, there are no need to find what is local maximum and what is local minimum. Okay. Just we need to evaluate function. Evaluate function, I mean, 
uh, to in the function yeah. in this function here yeah. Yeah. in this function to replace x by negative one yeah. by zero by four and by seven uh, sorry i have a question okay uh, if we if we need to, to find uh, maximum uh, absolute maximum and absolute minimum values uh, in which uh, we have to use uh, the function the Who is formula? function or derivative function exactly. derivative function uh, to find these points i know uh, in which uh, function we have to plug the uh, critical points it's a that's a big in the beginning. Okay, look up. As we told, as we discussed, absolute maximum and absolute minimum can mm -hmm. occur at the end points or at the critical points. Yes. It means we need to, we already know end points. End points here are minus one, negative one, and seven. They are end points. Now we need to find critical points. Mm -hmm. Critical points, it means when derivative equal to zero. We found it. Okay. Zero with four. And now to determine at which point we have absolute maximum and absolute minimum. We need just to replace x by negative one, by seven, uh, by zero, and by four. Mm -hmm. okay. And the largest value, largest value here is 49. Smallest value is negative 32. It uh, means so, uh, 49 is absolute maximum, negative 32 is absolute minimum. Uh, so, mm, anyway, too, we need to find another critical points uh, beside uh, endpoints. Yes, derivative here we need only to find uh, critical points. We don't need here to find local maximum and local minimum. To find local maximum and local minimum, it's more complicated, look up, to find yes. local maximum and local minimum because uh we should find when function is decreasing or when function is increasing or uh, we can find or we can find yes it does not it does not Luca, any questions? No. Let me tell you to go up for it. Now, uh, do you remember we discussed about uh, concave up and concave down. Mm. When graph is concave up and concave down. Oh, I see. Do uh, you remember? Uh, we have these curves in uh, it's a, um, quadratic function. Uh, curve of quadratic fun function, yes? Not only quadratic function. A graph of function, it may be concave up, may be concave down. Uh, no, how? And look, for example, exponential function. Exponential function. Just a minute. Just a minute, I will show now how important it is to know concavity. And I will show on the example of coronavirus. 
of spreading coronavirus. Look. Just a minute. Can you see this graph? Yes. yes. It's spreading of coronavirus in the United States. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. First case of coronavirus in the United States, January 22. After one month, they had only 15 cases yeah. of coronavirus. Okay. Only 15. Yep. But then, at the interval of 10 days, look, from February 20 to March 1, mm. there happened exponential growth, exponential growth. And mm. what means exponential growth? Exponential growth, it means the graph is concave up. This mm -hmm. is concave up. And concave up, it means that increasing rate of change. Yeah. So it's increasing very fast. And after February 20, to March 1, they had 2,000 case, wow. 2,000 case during 10 days, 2,000 case. And now all the world now focused to make this concave up curve to replace by concave down. And here I can show you case of concave concave down and these concave down they they are in the countries when they acted immediately and they act district measures they made district measures uh, I will now look in case of Hong Kong, they have district measures there, and this car also increasing, increasing, but it's concave down. Mm -hmm. Also, in case of Singapore, they made they acted immediately and also concave down but in case of europe and the united states they late to act and that's why these graphs these graphs are concave down concave down it means that infected people number of infected people increasing very fast. Wow. So when we have graph concave up and concave down, it depends from the second derivative. When second derivative of function is positive, graph is concave up. In fact, uh, Sandro, what it means that second derivative is positive? What is second derivative? Second derivative is derivative, derivative. of first derivative. And what is first derivative? First derivative is speed. First derivative is rate of change. 
And the second derivative is positive. It means that speed increasing, rate of change increasing. And car, we have concave up. And when second derivative is negative, when second derivative is negative, in this case, it means speed is decreasing. Rate of change decreasing. And car, we have, car, we have, uh, car, we have concave down. And uh, what kind of graph we have when we have constant speed? We have line in this case, line, just line. If you remember from your physics in this school, when speed is constant, when speed is constant, graph is line. Yeah. No. Now here we have uh, the same function, the same interval, no, but now we have, we need now to find uh, not absolute maximum and absolute minimum, but we need to find local maximum and local minimum. It's more complicated yet it's more challenging. So first step is the same. We need to find first derivative. Uh, and we know that critical values are 0 and 4, but now we need to find these critical values are at these critical values function is how function have local maximum or local minimum. For this, we can use chart to find when graph is increasing and when graph is decreasing. And also we can use second derivative. When second derivative. I have a question, sir. Just a minute, just a minute, okay. Diamond. Okay, sir. Uh, when second derivative is negative, it means that we have local maximum. And when second derivative, when second derivative is positive, it means we have local minimum. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Okay. Yeah, you ask that second derivative, it's like a speedy, that it's more speedy than first derivative, right? What second derivative? Yes, that is speedy, over speeding, like SS speeding, that first one. No. Speed is increasing, yes. When second yes, derivative yes, is positive, speed is increasing. Yes, but when it comes to local uh, maximum, it goes down. No, Did local maximum is the, is, the, is the lowest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we have to use second derivative on local maximum, yes? Yes, yes. Good. And why is it coming down? Because it's increasing. Oh, say again. Why it comes down when it is local maximum? Ah, okay, okay. You know, it's not it's not goes down. It goes up. Yeah. But it goes up. Car is concave down. It means function is increasing, but rate of change is decreasing. Speed of speed of increasing is decreasing. Okay. Okay, understand. What you understand? Mm -hmm. My question is, how do we get that? Okay, okay, Raymond, what is your question? Yeah, my question is. What is the difference between the first derivative and the second derivative? 
Uh, second derivative is to find the derivative of uh, the first derivative formula. Then, then how do we arrive at the first derivative? How do we get it? That is what I, I was asking. In the same way, Raymond, in the same way, in the same way, we will find second derivative and first derivative. But I promised you and I will discuss it later with you. Okay, sir. Even Miss with me too, not only Raymond, both of us. <laughs> we have to, I, I understand that we have to, I understand that it's, uh, we have to integrate to get the first derivative. Do you understand, Sandro? Yes. Okay. Yeah. This let me, let me right? continue. Let me continue, Raymond. This integration. Yes, sir. Now, uh, next example we have on the open interval. Okay, sir. Given function, and we need to find absolute minimum. Okay, sir. Or absolute maximum on the interval from zero to infinity. Mm -hmm. So solution first step is the same we should find uh, we will find first derivative and this is first derivative and they are critical values So we have critical values, but now we need to define anti critical values. Function have absolute minimum or absolute maximum. Okay. And for this, we have to use second derivative test. Second derivative test, it means we found second derivative and then plug and in this second derivative formula, plug these critical values. When second derivative is positive, pay attention. We need only sign of second derivative. We need only to know second derivative is positive Mm -hmm. or second derivative is negative we don't need to know value of second derivative only sign only positive or negative okay here second derivative when we plug to second derivative second derivative is positive it means we have minimum of function and how to find minimum of function to find minimum of this function, we will plug in the original function. Mm -hmm. We will plug two in the original function, and our answer is going to be two plus two, four. Uh, six. Two plus two, it's four. Six. Two, two plus four divided by two, seven. It's one. Three. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. Yeah. But it's 2 plus 4 divided by 2, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That should be okay. And here pictures about absolute extremum on open interval. First case, there are no absolute extremum. Okay, sir. Second, the same. There are no absolute extrema. Do you remember? Uh, it was your question, Luca. Yes. Uh, this second case, it was your question. What's happening when we have open interval? In this case, we have no absolute extrema. Yes. And this is, it's obvious that it has not it's obvious. Okay, we finished our first lecture.
And uh, let's continue after 10 minutes. Okay. okay.